Hi guys, a couple of days have gone past since the previous section of this video and since then we've been and collected the parts, ordered them on the phone, they had to get the parts delivered in but that only took one day. So a great service there from Motor Vela at La Spezia, thank you very much. They are a Volvo Penta dealer but they don't change the injector sleeves themselves, they take the cylinder head to a local diesel specialist and they do the job. So that's what we did, we took the cylinder head to them and they have changed the injector sleeve which I'll explain more about in a moment. I'm just about to get myself ready to get stuck in and put the engine back together now. Before I do that, I just thought I'd share something with you that I learned by accident the other day. When I was in the Royal Air Force, as a, I used to work as an aircraft technician, this, this is why I'm comfortable around spanners and hammers and things like that. We didn't, never used gloves because you lose dexterity when you're working, but we used barrier cream for our hands. So you put the cream on before you do any oily, dirty work. And then at the end of the job, when you wash your hands, all the dirt just comes off and it, you don't have any damage on your hands from oil dermatitis things like that anyway the other day when i went to do that job i had factor 50 on my hands just because i put sun cream on then i did the job a few hours later or a couple of hours later when i went to wash my hands it was almost like i had berry cream on it just came off straight away so that's a little tip for you if you're doing anything dirty and oily uh, put some sun cream on your hands also i just wanted to explain something else to you it's not particularly a, a hot day today um, but shortly I'm going to be taking this uh, this top off which I suppose is a good thing in a fashion sense because stripes and stripes don't really work do they but it's not because I think that you guys want to see my body I know you don't it's because uh, if I don't want to get my clothes dirty basically so if I get my get, get some oil on my body I can have a shower and it's gone and I've not ruined my clothes so that's why I'm getting semi-naked let's get this engine fixed then if you remember I removed the injector to make life easy for the diesel specialist and I rolled it up in paper and I also covered the other injector in paper too so that it was nice and clean and when they brought this crate round to us the first thing I saw was that both injectors had dirt in them so they'd removed the paper and then allowed dirt to get in the injectors so I wasn't happy about that I cleaned them out there with a with a piece of uh, paper towel and then I also noticed straight away that there was a problem with how it's been reassembled can you see what that is yep exactly this injector is facing the wrong way so I'm going to have to remove this and reposition it before refitting the cylinder head. Um, so yeah, there we are. This is kind of part of the reason that I struggle to uh, get other people to do work for me because it just seems that when I take things to other people and get other people involved, they're not quite as conscientious as I am. So I think next time I will buy the special tools and I'll do this job myself because then I'll know exactly how it's been done. Anyway, here we are. We're ready to fit this now and we'll hopefully have an engine back soon. Oh, that's nice the stud is screwing out so instead of a nut coming off the stud has just unscrewed so it's okay i can deal with that So as I screw down the nut and washer onto this yoke, the yoke has a pivot point and basically as we squeeze this down, the yoke pushes the injector down and seats it and it's the pressure of that against the copper sleeve which um, prevents the combustion gases escaping. Ah, I've got the old injector sleeve here and I thought it'd be worth mentioning a couple of things. First of all, I didn't realise that these things were so thick in terms of material thickness. They're about three millimetres thick and I only saw that when I got the new part. So what that means is you've got lots of depth of material in the seat area at the bottom of this. If you have a bit of a leaky injector sleeve then you can get one of the cutting kits that you can buy and you can cut a new surface in there. You've got lots of material to work with. And in that case, you can fix it in situ without buying new parts. Another thing uh, I can see from the, uh, the evidence on the end of this, as I said, there are three special tools to do this job. There's one, which is an extractor, which goes in, it's like an expanding bolt. It then expands within there, and then it has a puller that you use to pull out this injector sleeve i can see that that's not been used by the diesel specialist they've used a drift 
and they've drifted it out so I could have done that myself. I'm hoping that they've used the special tools to put this in. I'm sure they have. They have pressure tested it, so um, you know that's going to be fine. But more evidence that we pay people, specialists, to do a job for you, and sometimes you're better doing it yourself. I'm now going to give the injectors another clean out with some WD-40, just to make sure there are no remnants of dirt in there. And I will also clean up the inlet and exhaust valves on both cylinders and I'll clean up the whole uh, mating area the, where the gasket's going to be and then afterwards I will dry that, I'll, I'll clean it with uh, alcohol and make sure that there's no residual oil or grease because the head gasket, the new head gasket is going in here and that is installed dry so I'll do that both on this surface and the surface on the engine block too. Whilst I'm here I just thought it'd be interesting to get these copper washers out that I fabricated 10 months ago as a temporary fix. There we are, like I said, I used two different diameters of copper pipe, 10 mil and 15 mil, and I made two washers, a smaller one and a larger one. And they kind of, the smaller one fit into the inside diameter of the larger one. And then they were in position in the seat of the injector sleeve. If I give these a bit of a knocking about, I'm sure we can separate them. There we are. So you can see the two different washers. It took a couple of attempts when I did this to get them the right, exactly the right size that I wanted. Uh, but they worked. So if anybody is in the middle of a Pacific atoll or something and you've got internet but you don't have any access to spare parts, this is something that you could try. I'm now going to remove the old head gasket and another note of interest to people. When I did my temporary fix, I didn't have a head gasket, the shop was closed, I wanted the boat to work again, as I've said before. So I refitted the cylinder head using the same head gasket. And just to let you know, it did not leak. Uh, I know it's standard practice to replace the head gasket. I didn't because I didn't have one. I knew it was only a temporary fix and I would be coming back to fix it properly at some point in the near future. But just as a note of interest, it didn't leak. So I'm going to remove this now and then I shall make sure I very meticulously clean the mating surface. Again, I'll degrease it, make sure there's no oil or any other remnants on there and then we'll be ready to refit the cylinder head. We do now have a new cylinder head gasket. That's why I'm removing this one. Uh, quite an expensive part actually. It was over 100 euros just for that gasket. But I want this to be, uh, you know, a permanent repair to this engine and that's why I'm replacing it. Okay, that's the old head gasket removed. If you have a close look at that, Marcella, please, there you can see that the head gasket has left. Um, part of the gasket is stuck to the mating surface on the um, engine block. So that's all going to have to be cleaned. This has to be spotlessly clean and degreased ready for the new one. I'll do that now. I've also sliced my finger open. Just as a warning to others, the, um, the edge of the engine block is quite sharp. So watch your fingers. I'm going to stick a bit of alcohol on this so that it doesn't give me any bother. I'm just cleaning off the mating surface here. It's going to take a very long time because as I'm cleaning this off, I have to be 100% sure that none of the bits go into the engine. So it's going to be a very long winded process. While I'm putting the engine back together, wherever I've got these uh, O-rings and seals, I'm replacing them. I've got some silicon grease and uh, I'll replace these because as you can see, the old seals tend to get quite badly deformed and I don't wanna have any leaks after I've reassembled the engine. So while I'm here, I'm replacing all of these.
new head bolts, 20 newton meters, then 70 newton meters. And then heads back on now and they're still in the push rods back in the same order that they came out and then I'll install the rocker arm bridge this is uh, handed you, you could put that on the wrong way round there's a small hole there that aligns with the hole in the gasket just in case anybody else is doing this job you just insert the spacers here into the, the rubber grommets then they can they can just kind of stay in position while you put the rocker cover in place so just be careful they don't fall down any holes and then if you gently put them into position you're then ready to torque these down There we go. Now refitting the decompression lever. And now refitting the alternator drive belt. I'm now refitting the pressure pipes, fuel pressure pipes between the fuel injection pumps and the injectors. And as you can see on the fuel injection pumps, I've placed some pieces of paper wrapped around tightly to avoid any debris getting inside there. Cleanliness in your fuel system is, is pretty important. Very important I should say, not pretty important. You don't want to have blocked injectors. Um, I'm going to tighten these two up down at the injection pumps nice and tight but the two on the injectors I'm not going to bother torquing them just yet uh, because I'm going to be bleeding the fuel system shortly. Just refitting this fuel return line. I'm now about to refit the air intake silencer. I'm now refitting the exhaust. While I'm here I'm also going to replace the impeller for the cooling water for the engine. We've got three spares on board and I might as well stick a new one in while I'm here working away. I've replaced the impeller, so I'm just about to turn on the engine start battery. I'll have to nip outside and turn on the uh, controls for the engine so that the fuel pump starts to run and then I'll be bleeding the fuel. Okay, so there's no air bubbles coming out of that now. I'll mop up this fuel and uh, we'll come back to you in a minute. I'm now bleeding off the air from the fuel return lines of the injectors. Human beings funny. Usually when you've got the engine running you're like oh god that noise is really annoying me and then as soon as you turn it off and the noise stops you're like yeah that's better. But on this occasion it's the other way around so humans are fickle creatures aren't we? If anybody's got any tips and tricks better ways of doing this then please leave a comment below because that will help other people and yeah let us know what you think. Do you enjoy videos like this? Are they boring? 
let us know and we'll modify our channel based on the feedback that we receive from you guys. I guess that's it, isn't it Ro? Yeah. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Ciao ciao. Bye, ciao.